Hi, my name is Mike Abbott. I'm the Division Chief of Operations with the Springfield Fire Department in Springfield, Illinois. And we're here today to show you guys our new uh, enforcer pumper. Uh, this will be one of seven enforcer pumpers that we have on order in addition to uh, two aerial trucks. So just starting at the front, we went with the uh, severe duty bumper. We have been putting 150 foot inch and three quarter pre-connects in the uh, bumper, which will facilitate easy deployment for vehicle fires, as well as incidents where we have to enter alleyways and some of the older sections of town. Also on the front, we've elected to put a road array on the apparatus, which is uh, unique to us now. We've never done that before, but with some of the studies out there about emergency lighting, we have looked at utilizing lights that will rotate, lights that will flash, and then slowing down the flash pattern so that it's not so quick. Uh, another thing that is unique for us is we typically don't do power windows, power locks, but we chose to do that on this apparatus because of the experiences that we were seeing nationally with rioting, and we were looking at how do we secure our cab quickly when we're in one of those environments. Uh, the cab also features a backup camera for the uh, driver engineer, and that camera has a side view camera on the officer side that will automatically come on when the turn signal is activated. We've also tried to get rid of as much fabric inside the cab. We're using vinyl seating, uh, and we've removed any fabric on the doghouse, so when it comes to deconning of the apparatus, it will be simpler. Another unique thing within the cab that we did is all the seat cushions are 17 inches deep. Typically there's 17 in the front, 15 in the rear, but we have found that the one item that gets replaced a lot is going to be the seat cushion. So we're trying to standardize that across the fleet. So our fleet services department uh, will only have to stock one. EMS compartment here, we have added electrical outlets in these compartments to facilitate charging of cardiac monitor suction units. Same thing with the compartment. that exists back here. Electrical outlet in it as well. Extinguisher storage and access for pike poles and we'll have other various hand tools in here as well accessible for the crew from outside. Uh, another thing that's unique for us is that we are going with forward facing SCBA seats. Uh, typically we have been uh, rear facing but we've heard from several of our firefighters that they would prefer to ride forward facing so that they can see what incident that they're coming into and help with the size up of it. Another unique thing that we've added into this cab is the storage on top of the EMS boxes. There are two smaller storage boxes up there. We, just like other fire departments in the nation, have had to start carrying ballistic equipment. So now we're going to provide access to that ballistic equipment from inside the cab. Moving over to our pump panel, again, another change for us. Uh, we have shrunk down our pump panel down to the smallest that we can get, which I believe is 42 inches. We have also went with the uh, swing gate style valves versus the push pull. Uh, this was an idea that we had seen on numerous apparatus, but we had also contacted the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department and discussed with them the pros and cons, which helped to solidify the decision to move to this. Um, but by shortening down the panel, that also allows us to get our wheelbase down uh, under 185 inches, which makes the rig very maneuverable. We have went away from utilizing crosslays uh, with this apparatus, and in place of the crosslay, we have put a compartment up here for the storage of backboards and a six foot folding ladder. Our deck gun has a hand wheel at both the pump operators panel as well as up in the dunnage area where the extended gun feature sits so that our driver engineers, if we elect to do a blitz attack, they can pressurize the pump, climb up to the top, and then engage the deck gun with raising the uh, extended gun feature and aiming the gun without wasting any water. Uh, by having that valve up there, they can open it whenever they're ready. Also what's new for us is the use of the Trident relief valve. Previous apparatus for us always have a preset relief valve that typically can't be changed in the field. This will allow our crews to adjust that setting in operations when they deem it that it's necessary. Compartmentation for us, 
We have elected to stay with the same body style that we have used several years ago when we uh, worked as an apparatus committee. We came up with what we thought would be the most efficient utilization of our compartments. So currently this one is set up to be the pump operator's compartment where they'll have access to heavier tools that will be on a pull-out uh, tray. Uh, this tray will be more of the uh, fittings and adapters that the pump operator will access, nozzles, and then uh, assorted equipment that could be up here. The center compartment, typically what we'll have is our uh, high-rise pack and then our lockout tools for uh, being able to access car doors. Uh, and I believe up in this area will also be our um, hose clamp and uh, hose jacket that we have to carry for ISO purposes. We've got SCBA storage in the wheel wells down this side, two bottle storage on each side, and we have separated our def and fuel to prevent any accidental filling with the wrong fluid. We've set this one up for the driver engineer. When this rig does go in service, this shelf will actually be down to this location. The driver's SCBA will ride here. Driver's gear can ride here. Uh, there will be different sections of uh, supply hose and attack hose uh, whenever they need uh, the 50 foot, 25 foot section of five inch or an additional inch and three quarter or two and a half and some hand tools that will be mounted here on some of the tool boards. Around to the back is where we've made a big change with our department. We have tried to lower our hose bed as low as we can get it. Currently we are uh, at roughly 60 inches off the ground, which uh, we think is going to be an excellent height and most of our pre-connects will come off the rear of the uh, apparatus. We have basically taking a quick release netting that we've seen on Baltimore County apparatus and utilized it on this apparatus. So. Uh, when our crews arrive on scene, all they have to do is come up, pull the uh, orange release, and the entire net will drop down off to the side and out of the way. The other thing off of the rear of the apparatus is going to be the bar that crosses over the uh, bed. That allows us to put some additional scene lighting up there. Um, that's another thing that we look to improve on this apparatus. The arrow stick that we've put up top uh, also is a two-function arrow stick. It will do the standard amber directional, and then with a flip of a switch, it has the ability to go red and blue for an emergency mode. So in this rear compartment, it will be set up with a pull-out tray for that cribbing, and then the other two trays will store some additional equipment uh, that the, uh, the engine company will need to carry. Again, we're going down into the wheel well areas and trying to utilize as much of the uh, dead space as possible. So we've elected to do a triple bottle storage here and then an extinguisher compartment here, which will allow us to put a CO uh, extinguisher, a CO2 extinguisher and a uh, O2 bottle in addition to an, another SCBA bottle. Center compartment. Shelving to separate what will be life safety rope, utility rope, uh, ice rescue suits, and then some of the uh, ancillary EM equi EMS equipment like KED, blue splints, uh, things that we would uh, utilize on some of the calls, but not on most of our calls. And then the final compartment, another pull-out tray, adjustable height shelf that will be set to come around this uh, hydraulic ladder box. Uh, it will carry some additional ancillary equipment, um, including we have a program in Springfield where we will go in and install uh, smoke alarms. So that kit will be sitting in this compartment for the crew to utilize if they're requested to install one. Officer side pump panel basically has large diameter discharge on it, one two and a half inch discharge and then access again for the step ladder uh, and the backwards. We also have a 200 foot, one inch booster reel up on top, which we will utilize for rubbish fires, brush fires, um, and then wash downs when needed. All right, in our officer seat, uh, one thing that we have done 
on these apparatus that would not be done on most Springfield Fire Department apparatuses, we've put in an AM FM weather band radio. Uh, some people might look at that as a uh, item that's not necessary for the fire service. However, Springfield was hit by a tornado uh, back in the early 2000s. And during that evening, our communication system went down, our cell phone system went down, but the one thing that was still working were the AM FM radio stations and that is a way for us to get some additional information. So we see that as a, a good safety feature for our crews when we get into those environments. The uh, lighting package that we chose to go with is uh, Wheeland. We've got the Wheeland roto beam bar that will have a combination of roto beams and uh, flashing lights, roto beams in the front grille, as well as M6 lights in the front and down the uh, body side, roto beams on the uh, rear of the apparatus and M6 back there too. One other thing that we had placed on the front of our apparatus, the bumper eyeball mirror to allow our crews to navigate through some of the older sections of town. This time I'd like to thank you for uh, taking a look at our apparatus. We would like to thank uh, McQueen uh, Fire Equipment and our sales rep Mike Yurjic for working with us on this. Uh, this has been a historic purchase for the city of Springfield. Being that we're able to buy nine apparatus, uh, that has not occurred uh, as far as anybody knows uh, in the department history. Um, and uh, one thing that's unique about the uh, city of Springfield is not only are we the state capital for Illinois, we are also the home of President Abraham Lincoln and his final resting place. So again, thank you.